Twitter court documents reveal why Atheist Republic was suspended. So there's a couple things to talk about here. First of all, if you're not familiar, we have had a court case going forward in the Delhi High Court for a long time. I don't even remember how long now. Maybe over almost a year. I don't know. We've been in front of the Delhi High Court for a long time now because the court proceedings are slow. And I can give the full background. Should I give the full background now? A short version. Okay. So basically there was a guy who was super butthurt about some little memes we had on our Atheist Republic page. And some of them were just things that were advertising a speech that I was giving. And in that advertising for the speech that I was giving, it had like sexy Kali kissing Sita, like, you know, in support of gay marriage in India. And there was a, yeah, so just like very baseline standard atheist memes, except they happen to like criticize or satirize Hinduism. That's it. And because Wait, of this- Let me this... clarify something. Somebody is reading this as Twitter court. No, it's not Twitter court. It's Twitter court documents. So we have court documents about our Twitter case. So just like clarify. But go on. Yeah. So basically this guy was trying to go after Twitter India itself as an entity, Twitter, it's Twitter as an entity, the various um, ministries in India itself and certain private citizens who are employees of Twitter, all because they allow this content to be on their platform. And they were demanding that it be removed, that the identities of the people who operate these accounts be exposed and that our entire account be suspended. And this has been going on for some time. And we were finally made a party to the case because this was about us. Originally, this had basically, we weren't included as a party. And so we had a court hearing recently on the 6th of September. And people were like, oh, you know, this was in the news. Actually, this was in news in many places in India. There were a lot of press outlets that were talking about this. And but we waited to cover it until now because I needed to meet with our lawyers and discuss things and yeah, have some important meetings before I could come to you guys to talk about it. So basically what had happened, what had happened was at our last proceedings, what ha which happened in the end of March of this year, the high court ruled against us basically said that Twitter had to comply with an earlier affidavit and remove the content that they thought was so offensive. And, um, then they, but it was supposed to be specifically for those specific tweets and they were supposed to only be removed from the Indian market. They were supposed to be viewable to other people. Now, a few days after that last court hearing, we were suspended from Twitter on April 1st, literally. Um, and then our next court hearing was for September 6th. So a lot has changed in that time. And so at first, you know, Twitter did remove those tweets and we could see that and we received notice of that. And then we were fully suspended without explanation. And so we've been fighting for the past few months to, at the bottom line, get an explanation about why we were suspended because we've, asked many times through many different means and we've received no answer. And so at the latest court proceedings, um, there was some argument back and forth with Twitter before the Delhi high court about like why they hadn't enforced these things sooner because Twitter was basically demanding an explanation about why they could preemptively take action against Trump, but they didn't preemptively preemptively take action against us. And so there's a whole legal argument about that. They say we have to have actual knowledge, all this stuff. I'm not really going to get into it because it's like, a it's, I just want to, I just want to put things in context. Okay. Just remember at this point that this is all about us posting art of Hindu goddesses, which has gotten the, the daily high court. Okay. This is our life. Can you believe this? Comparing us to Donald Trump. Okay. That's so not, not just any Donald Trump, Donald Trump inciting an insurrection. Yes. So I never thought in my life that the Delhi high court, okay. will be comparing me and Susie 
because of pictures of Hindu goddesses that we posted on Twitter in a serious legal battle between us and this high court in India. We, we've been compared to the president of the United States <laughs> being the reason for an insurrection, a, a potential coup against the regime. This is how serious things are getting. They're like, oh, if they're talking to Twitter, one of the biggest, there's a, there's a discussion between a government, the high court of a government, and one of the world's largest social media outlets about why they would take action against Trump like that but not against us like that. And this is, I, I can't believe this is happening. Like, I, how is this happening? But anyways, go on. <laughs> that still amuses me so much. Um, Satya has the funniest thing. <laughs> Trump being compared to Atheist Republic. You guys have to give it to us. We have the most savage courts. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> What happened in the most recent proceedings was some arguments from Twitter about, you know, towards the court about why they took the previous actions or their lack thereof and stuff like that, which I'm not going to get into because it's more between them. What in terms of what is relevant to us, I can tell you how we are going to proceed and what's moving forward. So there's some technical stuff about changes of parties in terms of who's redressed and who's a respondent. It's technical. I'm not going to get into it. But what's important to know is that Twitter is basically at the next hearing, which is happening on October of October 28th. Um, Twitter is going to move for the matter to be seen as infractu infractuous. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's a, uh, a legal term. And the Atheist Republic legal team, we are also going to be moving for this motion this petition to be seen as infractuous which basically means ineffectual useless irrelevant at this point so why are we arguing this the petitioner the original petitioner is still trying to take action against us twitter literally argued in the replies that they submitted before the court that i read they're like twitter references the fact that we have had fris fris filed against us in their court documents they're, in Twitter's responses, in Twitter's replies to the court, they're saying these people have had FIRs filed against them in Bangalore in 2020, all this stuff. Like they, they're basically arguing that people are already taking action against us for this, you know, behavior and that they have already complied with removing the tweets. The account altogether is already completely suspended. So there's nothing more for them to do. So at this point, the petition before the court is meaningless. It's useless. It's infractious. It's irrelevant. Our lawyers are going to be basically saying the same thing. We are going to be saying, look, everything you've asked for has been fulfilled. There's nothing further to pursue at this point. And anything, any issues we have remaining, we are going to take up with Twitter personally. We have nothing, there's nothing more, there's nothing further for this matter to be pursued. So that's how we're going to handle this court case at the next hearing. Now, but that's how we're handling this court case. How are we handling our Twitter suspension? This brings me to the next part. So in the documents that were submitted by Twitter before the Delhi High Court, it was finally revealed why they suspended us. We finally have some insight into why they suspended us. What policy did we violate that caused them to suspend the largest atheist account on the platform? or atheist, you know, community content related account. So the reason is, is that they submit, oh shoot, maybe I should pull it up on my other computer because I have the documents. Basically, they reveal that they suspended our account because of the ban evasion policy. So what that means is that there were other accounts that were banned and then you're continuing to operate this account after you were banned on a different account. Therefore, you are trying to evade a suspension. This violates our policies. We're going to suspend this account you're now utilizing. Now, our argument is essentially that this is an incorrect enforcement of Twitter's ban evasion policy because they are treating me, Armin, and Atheist Republic as a single entity. But we are not a single entity. 
Atheist Republic is its own organization. It's an established 501c3. It's a nonprofit in Canada. And it is an organization. Armin and I are individuals. Our accounts were tweeted or operated by us as individuals. We represent Atheist Republic. Atheist Republic does not represent Armin and Susanna. Atheist Republic represents our global community. And the two of us just happen to have the privilege of being able to be the most public out of our community, right? We do not use the Atheist Republic account for our personal means. And therefore, we should not be treated as a singular entity. Not only that, but the Atheist Republic account existed way prior to, I don't know about you, but my personal account was started in 2020. The Atheist Republic account was started in 2011. You know, so saying that we're operating this account to do ban evasion, it's not like the Atheist Republic account was set up after we were personally banned and we're using that to get around things. This was existing prior to that. I can't make a statement regarding your account, Armin, because I can't remember the date of when your account was created. But I know that the main Atheist Republic account was created almost 10 years before I ever had a Twitter and so to that end, we are again seeking legal redress to the best of our ability. And we're looking into a variety of ways that we can do that. But this is going to increase our legal expenses greatly. Um, and so we do have a GoFundMe to help. Yay, thank you for pulling that up. Um, help with our legal expenses. It's on GoFundMe. You can say it's titled Help Us Fight Hindutva. And basically help us fight this harassment, judicial harassment, attempts to take us down everywhere we are purely because we have the balls to satirize Hinduism, to criticize Hindu nationalism, and to combat these forces that want dissidents, dissenters, to be silenced, gone. And so once we have more information that we can bring to you about what kind of methods we're taking to address the situation. I will definitely come to the community and give more information. But like, I, it, as is the case with legal things, you know, when we have a lot of stuff going on in the background that we can't immediately come forward and tell you guys about. Um, but I wanted to give you this really important update about our case. By the way, all the things that Susanna has done with our uh, lawyers is because of this, these donations, right? So all like we have, this was supposed to be them just coming out and intimidating us and shutting us down and it will be case closed and move on. But because you people have donated, Susanna has managed to use all this money to pay some lawyers to keep this going. Right. And as much as it's, you know, it, it's bad that we lost our Twitter account. The fact that we are, I think it's worth it's good that we're not just taking it. You know, I, I'm just, it's just good that we can show ways, like even if we, whether we're successful or not, we want to create a roadmap for maybe other people who are being mistreated like this to say, figure out what works and what doesn't work. And maybe what could, we could use this as a way, as a resource for other people as well. Like if, once we come, come out of the other end, we could like, I don't know, we could do this form of activism for secular, secularism in India as a whole, you know, like we would, I don't know if I want to mention in detail, but there are so many other things that we want to pick up. I don't know if what, what I can say, Susanna, or not, but we would like to, like, at some point for Atheist Republic to grow to do this thing for other people, right? Like, mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, so I'm not going to go into detail because I don't know if, I'm, if I should, right? But I will talk to Susanna and see what I can say, right? But anyways, this is a good, because Atheist Republic is supposed to do this type of political activism if we go like you know what FIFRF is doing for the united states we would like to do that for places like in india at some point you know with the help of people atheists in india who are joining our organization if our organization one day grows enough right we want to be we, we want to use our resources to do legal active not just like shows and raising awareness legal activism for secularism in india so this as big of a price that we have paid, which is a Twitter account, this might be because every time we, we lose something, we gain something even bigger, right? And I'm hoping that this eventually 
would lead to us learning how to do this in India and opens the door for us to become more legally involved in India, right? So if you want to help us continue this fight, again, because this fight is going to continue, I think, in the United States now, right? That's where we would have a better chance. Right. Definitely. So this this legal fight started in India, and now it's moving to the United States because now we're moving towards um, Twitter. Uh, so the legal costs might pick pick up because that's going to be a lot more expensive so we do yeah 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 <laughs> so, we, so we need your help right now to make sure that we continue fighting this battle right by the way this is um this is not just reported by atheist republic like a couple of news outlets reported on this so this is a yeah, big yeah, yeah. deal so do do you want to do we have I was like, oh my God, we're in Bar and Bench, we're in Live Law, we're in the Hindustan Times. Look at us. <laughs> Can you show? Yeah, like guys, this is this is do you have some of these updates? Wait, um yeah. yes, give me 30 seconds. Um wait, is this I is have... this one of them? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let me remove this highlighted. So guys, like this is like we, we I showed it, this to you on Atheist Republic, right? But we're making this news being covered in m m many places. Like this is con this is a newsworthy event. So Atheist Republic is con is constantly making the re trying to understand the line in highlighting the the legal lines in India when it comes to social media blasphemy. Um, all of this, and we're like, we are part of we're drawing these lines and pushing for them to move, right? So we're being covered. Our legal battle is not something that we're just like paying attention to, right? It's, it's being, over the past year, every single update is being reported on many different outlets, news outlets in, in India itself, right? So this is setting a precedent. This is making a difference. So if we manage to eventually get somewhere, if this legal battle continues and we have any success at all with it, it is, you know, it is some it's a really good reference for us to have under our belt. And it also uh, adds a lot of credibility to Atheist Republic as a as an organization that is doing legal that is involved in legal battles for for the sake of secularism in India, right? So having this in our resume gives us a, a lot of credibility. For eventually a faithless republic to to grow, to be like this was our history, and if we eventually get to a place where we could go do other legal activism, we come with something with with uh, with experience under our belt, right? So if that's where your donation money will go to, if you help us with this, right? Where what, what other outlets covered this new update? Um, Bar and Bench and Live Law, which are basically the largest outlets for legal um coverage yeah they're like always in the court literally tweeting out what people are saying as they're saying it um such so as saying i want you guys to get back your account but after that twitter's as should be it's for good yeah i mean what it's not mean? just about i don't know what that means but it's not just <laughs> i just want to say it's not just about our account okay this is this is about us understanding like us pushing back any form of pushing back okay i mean guys it's um it's ridiculous it is ridiculous right that the government can push a social media outlet that is based in the united states to do something like this based on pictures of gods and goddesses right like it's good for india if things like this are not possible it is i don't know how but to, i don't it is kind of ridiculous that this is where we are at, right? It is better for India for this not to be allowed. For any pushback against this to succeed is better for India. So even if we fail, if more people push back, it, it's not as easy to do. It will make it difficult. It would make it costly to do stuff like this. We don't. We want there to be at least a cost to pay if you're doing something like this, right? Anyways, I don't know. Does it, is that is that fair, Susanna? Yeah. Say? Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, so link in the description. Please donate to our legal fund. Susanna has been doing such amazing work behind the scenes. You have no idea, okay? Susanna has become uh, an Indian politics expert, a journalist, and now she's becoming a legal expert. Um, okay, she's don't a push No, like, I don't, like, she's, the, you have no idea how much work it goes behind this. Like, she's, when, when you're donating, these, this money is not just being spent on lawyers. It's also a lot of hours that Susanna is, she's using she's taking your money and adding a lot of work and research and hours well, to I invested having, into having, our team yeah yeah so it, your your money is not going to be wasted so that's why yeah so satya guys look look we have hendutva in the live chat agreeing with me about how ridiculous this is okay so when you say we're fighting hendutva not all hendutva okay satya is a <laughs> Resident Hindutva, who is usually agrees with us on how ridiculous some of these are. Um, you also do a, yeah. a lot of hard work, Amr, and like I want to give you appreciation for that. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> you do work really hard. A lot of people don't see it. A lot of people are like, oh, Armin just shows up, Santa does everything. Like, that's not true. Armin runs like three different channels. Like, you're so hands on with the Persian community. Like, yeah. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, also, thank you. <laughs> the most Armin's most important job <laughs> is yeah. helping Susanna when I have mental breakdowns every other day. <laughs> <laughs> it's my most important job. <laughs> <laughs> and possibly the, <laughs> the weightiest. <laughs> oh so wait. <laughs> he needs a lot of recognition and appreciation for putting me back together all the time wow look at what said to say <laughs> Armin, disrespect yeah okay wait oxymoron is gonna get upset that we called satya our resident in Bitfa. okay <laughs> mercy you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.